First Baptist, and also welcome to the first day of fall. We're glad to see everybody here today and those who are on Zoom. We're looking forward to another wonderful hour of worshiping and fellowshipping together. And, and I really hope you love to sing. I'm glad Erwin's back. We got the organ going and it sounds great. So we got some wonderful hymns pick out for you today. So just give it all you can, as Erwin likes to say, you now blow, blow the barn door open. So that's what we're going to do in this hour as we gather together. There are some announcements. Connection is due today. So if you have anything to contribute, please bring it in, give it to Susan. Apparently the first mob meeting is going to be October the 5th. And that would be, I'm assuming at 10.30, I think was the usual time. So if we can make it to the first mom meeting, we um, talk about the orange shirt day. And I do believe it's, uh, oh, I don't see him here today. Uh, Hanny is coming to speak. So that should be quite interesting. So if you have some time, come out and enjoy what he has to share with us. Now we're getting to the fall weather and we have lots going on. We are hoping to have a movie night, Friday, October the 4th, I do believe. So I don't know if that's going to change or not. The movie we would like to watch is God is Not Dead. And if you haven't seen it, you should come watch it. It's a very encouraging movie. As well, we are trying to put together another dessert and music night which I do believe October the 27th. And I don't know if anybody has met Steve. I've known Steve for quite a few years, and he's helping. He doesn't realize it, but he's probably doing most of the work in organizing it. So, <laughs> so it should be a, a fun night. Anytime we it would come together to have a music and dessert night, we used to turn out to be a wonderful time in fellowship. And I wanted to mention this now. December the 14th. Christmas dinner. And the reason I'm mentioning it now is because this gentleman here, Lord, is going to go around soon and say, hey, you can do this, you can do this. He may not ask, but he might say, hey, you can. So I hope you will sign up because there's lots to do. And we know that we'll get together again for Christmas dinner to celebrate the Lord's birth. Beautiful time. 
And we are glad to have Erwin back up with the, on the organ. So Erwin, thank you for coming. Carlos, who is our tech person with help from Sheila. Lauren's going to be doing some reading. And obviously I'm here, so I'm going to share a little bit, as well as Steve's going to give a testimony, and Charlene's coming to share too. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the scripture that I picked for our call to worship, I would praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart, I would glorify your name forever. Let's have a time of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day that you have made. I thank you that you are the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the author of my faith. And Lord, I thank you for breathing life and giving life to us, a life that is challenging at time, but it is the joy of knowing that you are ultimately in charge. So we gather here this Sunday to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise, because you and you alone are worthy of that. And we know, Lord, that we live in a world that seems to be full of craziness, but yet we have comfort in knowing, once again, Lord, that you are ultimately in charge. And we look, we look to our government, we, we pray for them, we pray that they will look for you for wisdom and guidance. We pray for all the craziness that is happening in this world and somehow the, the peace will come. And maybe that peace will start with us. And maybe we can show love and compassion to people in this world who needs that love and compassion, who needs to know that there is something worth living for, something worth holding on to, something that's worth living for. And Father, let us be just a means to, to reach out to others, to show them love, show them compassion. And oh Lord, you know, we meet up with so many people that seem to be without hope. But you can give us hope, Lord. And Father, for this hour that we come together, open our ears, open our hearts. I don't know what you have to tell us, but I know that when we stop and listen, you do speak. And may we somehow put aside the distraction of this world for this hour. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome to speak to us, to take hold of us, to change us, to mold us into the image of Christ. Father, may we learn to submit to your will so that we can live for Christ in all that we do. So now that we'll be gathered to come to worship again, bring you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the first hymn was picked by Irwin. All my hope on God is founded is in the book of praise 462. Now he tells me this is an old Anglican church. I know he told me some other things that I was supposed to share, but I'm sorry I forgot already. But one thing I do remember is that he is going to play the hymn through once. So please remain seated. And after he plays through once, we will stand and sing together. Hymn 462, the book of praise, all my hope for God is founded.
we do have one child, two. So before Lauren comes up and read, I want to pray for them, and they are excused to go to Sunday school. Okay, so let's pray for the, our young people. Father, I thank you that we do have young people here and that they bring life to us, bring life to this building. And I don't know, I just love to see the joy that they bring and how they dance around and just have a great time. And may we be encouraged by that. And for those who are teaching them today, Lord, give them wisdom and guidance and help us and help them to grow in wisdom and knowledge. In Christ's name. We have three scripture lessons today, uh, two from the Psalms and uh, one from uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians. The first lesson is uh, from Psalm 139, uh, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So this particular Sunday actually came from the mind of John Hunt. A few years ago, we had Jason Peters come and speak. And one thing that I was amazed was how open and honest he was. Like to the point that it was kind of scary because he was sharing about struggles that he had when he was younger. Struggles that I don't think I would share with anybody. So afterwards, when you finished speaking, I said, Jason, you are, you are a brave, brave person. Like how can you, how can you be so open? especially to people that you don't even know. Well, he says, because that's how confident I am about God's forgiveness. So our thought was, well, maybe we can find some people who are willing to come up here and share about something God has delivered them from, something that God helped them to overcome. And you know, it was very difficult to find people who are brave enough to stand up here and share like that. And I can understand that. Like, do you really <coughs> want to know what's hiding in my closet? This is a very, very scary stuff. And as I was sharing with one person, well, I'm still struggling. And my response was, yes, you're not the only one. Whether we want you to admit or not, and, well, most times we don't want to admit. We do have struggles in our lives. Some of them are maybe very simple struggles, like, well, I gossip too much, or I sometimes use words I really shouldn't be using. Those things seem to be simple, right? Because we all know that it happens. But to share the deep, dark, dirty secrets of, of our lives, like, who wants to know that? Who wants to see deep inside? And yet, scriptures tell us, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Well, I would like to, but I'm scared. You know what I'm scared of? Well, what would you think? What would you audience think of me if you know the struggles that sometimes I face? Like right now, some of you may think, I'm a nice guy. Some of my customers think I'm a nice guy. Some of you might think that, wow, look at that guy. He's actually walking in obedience to the Lord. 
sometimes. But what will you know? What will you think if you know the deep, dark, and dirty secrets? I find sometimes that I have to fall on my knees in front of God and say, God, forgive me. God, help me. God, change this life so that I can be more like Christ. I find sometimes a struggle as we, as Lord read in Psalm 139, search me, O God. You know who wrote that? David. King David, the guy that we said, hey, he's a, he's a man after God's own heart. And what happened? <coughs> well, we know he sinned. He committed adultery. He committed murder. Church me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior. See if there be any wicked way in me, Lord. Now, if you pray that prayer, be willing to allow God to show you what's inside. See, we all struggle. We all have our struggles. We can relate to the apostle Paul says, I got this thorn in my flesh. I have prayed three times for God to get rid of it, but it's still there. We all struggle. And one of the encouragement that I would like us as a church to be willing to take the risk and listen. Listen to somebody's struggle. Listen to somebody's heart, heartaches. Listen to somebody's confession. Not to judge, but for the healing to start, the changing of life. You know, the hundred and some odd years that this church has been here, we have had people who have committed murder come through these doors. We have had some people who have committed some heinous sexual sins that come through these doors. And we have those who, who gossip, those who lie, those who have steal or stolen. We have had sinners come through our doors and it shouldn't be a surprise to us. But at the same time, when we open our hearts and allow ourselves to listen to people, we can see healing start. God is a God that wants to heal. And God is a God that wants people to change. So let's not be surprised that we all struggle. Let us not be surprised at what we can find when we actually open up somebody's heart but let us not be surprised that God can change, and God can heal, and God can create and more people into the image of Christ. We're going to sing, search me, O oh God. And I do believe the words will come up. And I do hope that for each one of us, like I know for me, I, have, I had to say this so often, choose me, oh God. And may this be a prayer as we sing this hymn. <laughs>
Our second lesson is from the book of Philippians. That's uh, Paul's uh, writing his letter to the Philippian church. And uh, we're in chapter 3, verses 12 to uh, 14. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. So one of the people that are brave enough to come and share with us is Steve Kleppenstein. Um, I think most of you should know Steve. Steve and I used to be housemates. We used to work together. Um, a few months ago, I think it was a few months ago, I'm not sure. Um, but I was struggling with a few things in life and it was like some ridiculous time in the morning. I know he works overnight. So I ended up taxing Steve, share with him. I think we um, taxed for a few hours. So I appreciate him as a friend and just appreciate him as somebody I can actually come and share with. So Steve is going to come and share with us now. Let's open our ears to what God has to tell us through him. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm Steve. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, when Bob uh, first uh, asked me about uh, sharing, I was uh, I was undecided. Um, yeah, um, I wanted to be. I wanted to be able to offer hope. Um, and uh, hang on, <laughs> I might be a little emotional because uh, I haven't had a cigarette this morning. <laughs> but uh, just a second here. Um, yeah, hope is not always. Uh, uh, an emotion, I guess, I feel I can offer. Um, but as we just learned, um, heard a second ago, there's always hope in Christ. So uh, this one is entitled, My, My Habits Have uh, Been a Curse to, to Me and to Those I Care For. Uh, the first time I felt like this was when uh, Lola Looming, uh, half my family is Filipino, uh, was sick in the hospital and I felt drawn to go and pray for her. Uh, my family and I drove there. I was able to pray and um, she, she seemed to feel the results of the prayer. Um, that uh, I was elated that uh, my prayer was helping. Yeah. At, at that time, I had abstained about three weeks from my own chosen vice and was feeling amazing. Um, seems like that's how it goes for me. If you, <laughs> just a short time and I'm like, yes, on top of the world. <laughs> um, where was I here? Uh, but in reality and of sober mind, uh, I would have been known as a spiritual infant, uh, craving only milk, not food. Um, I ended up falling back on my habits soon after, forgetting my responsibility to pray. Uh, she actually had asked for me at the hospital. Um, she, was, she said, where is he? Like she, uh, I felt better when he prayed. Uh, but I didn't return. And that she passed. And I felt like I failed her. Um, this, uh, this for me, um, it might, might have been the start of what I'm now uh, 
still dealing with is uh, cycles of depression uh, followed by cycles of elation. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is a little bit uh, <laughs> down. <or so. laughs> anyway, um, it happened again with my own father. Um, he mentioned that he needed help uh, moving, uh, though I didn't directly ask. Um, he was wanting to move him and my stepmom into a new apartment as they were getting up in years. I remember hesitating to give an answer right away. Um, I waited. Again, fell back into old habits. Idleness, sexual sin. Uh, made my body weak. During a camping outing the following weekend with my wife, daughter, and friends, I aggravated an old injury in my mid-lower back. I started walking like an old man. Uh, I had to take time off work. Uh, when, my, when my dad officially asked if, um, if I could help, I no longer could. Um, and it was that during that move, uh, when, uh, when we assumed that he had a stroke, uh, because he always wants to help, and even if there's no one there, he will, he will help. No. He is no longer with us. Um, that's about two years. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's two years now. Uh, my Uncle John just posted the anniversary of his passing on Facebook the other day. Um, so I was able to ask for his forgiveness after inviting him to a uh, men's breakfast at this church. Uh, so some of you met him and uh, forgiveness was given. So I could continue going on with instances where I felt someone's suffering was tied to my own actions. Uh, it's maybe partially true. Uh, it's maybe just meant to feel that way as a Christian, um, and we are accountable. Uh, so maybe partially true, maybe, maybe more face value, God's plans are above our own. Uh, his ways are above our ways, and his weakness is above our strength. The point is, I was made to feel accountable. I still, it's uh, still a feeling I cannot shake. My actions, especially my sins, have a noticeable pattern, pattern of detrimental outcomes. But it's not about me. Um, and that's another truth that I don't want to touch. <laughs> um, I, still, I still am stuck in cycles. I haven't found my way out. What I have found is that there's always, uh, there's always grace waiting for me after my failings. Uh, there's always the presence of God's love. Uh, guiding me to try again. And I will keep trying. Because... Uh, because of this unconditional love that I feel. Uh, it is the source driving my belief in a savior. The savior I know is Christ, and I believe he lived, died for our sins, and rose again, and that his spirit intercedes for us. There's always something to be thankful for when we open our eyes or when he does. Um, so, um, I have a song, it's called Heaven Is, and uh, it was inspired by my daughter just last week at the walk-in clinic. And uh, yeah, it's, 
I guess more is an example of that follow-up grace that God provides. Sometimes the struggle seems somewhat hopeless, but we do know there is hope. And our hope is found in Christ. So we're going to stand and sing Victory in Jesus. It's that good old gospel song that we all know. Uh, yeah, let's stand together and sing Victory in Jesus. And then the Lord's going to come read some more, and the Charlie's going to bring us home. So let's stand and sing Victory in Jesus. Thank you.
Our third lesson is from the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 7, 107, verses 1 and 2, 10 to 16, 31 and 32, and uh, verse 43. Well, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed them from trouble. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons, for they had rebelled against the word of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down in hard labor. They fell down with no one help. They then cried to the Lord, in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of elders. Let those who are wise give heed to those things and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. This end the reading of God's word. Morning. Morning. I want to start by thanking Bob for taking charge of our lessons, our sermon, our our time this morning together, because it's been a blessing. I know it's been a blessing to him. I know it's been a blessing to Stephen to share with us, and I know it's been a blessing to each one of us, because even though. It might seem like we've all got things together, that our lives are smooth sailing. We all have struggles. And I, again, thank you, Bob, for reminding us that these struggles are not anything new. They're not anything that God hasn't heard before. And they're not something that's going to keep God away from us. God continues to hear our prayer, God continues to be there for us when we pray, and God is never going to leave us in our darkness and in our troubles. I was asked, Bob asked me to, uh, to kind of bring the whole thing together this morning and to bring a, a kind of conclusion to our thoughts today. Um, I just want to say, you know, there's real no, really no conclusion to life. What we're looking at right now is what it's like to be alive. What it's like to have life. When it lives, when it lives within us, when we, we have that morning, we wake up in the morning and it's like, yes, time to live, time to go out and, and do something. And sometimes those are wonderful things wonderful times we get to spend with friends and family, other times, not so much. And I believe it's more than 50-50, but that's all I've got to work with is 50 and 50, but there's those good times and those bad times. And what came to my mind, and I listen to the radio all the time, um, one of the, the verses, of the day that I was listening to this week was in Psalm 107. And I thought, I heard the verse, and I thought, oh, that's perfect. Perfect for what we're looking at and thinking about today. And then I read the entire chapter, and that's why we kind of jumped through, because this entire chapter really sums up what we're looking at today. We're just to thank God, for he is good, is how it begins. His love endures forever. 
And of course, those are easy words to say on a day like today when we're all gathered in his church. We're all gathered together to sing praises to his name. Of course, the Lord is good. And that's what verse 2 reminds us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. We talk to each other. We tell each other how good God is. But. Now throughout the chapter, there's that back and forth. There's the times when the people, when God's people, were not in a good place. Verse 4, it says, some wandered in the desert wastelands. And I know just hearing from Stephen alone, but also hearing from others in the congregation, including Bob, that some of our lives, sometimes in our lives, we feel like we're in the wasteland, in the desert, where there's nothing around us and we're ready to give it in. But after this example of the dry lands and the thirsty and the hungry, Verse 8 says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. I'm back in class again at Providence, and we are, we're talking actually about preaching and, you know, how to be an effective preacher and to bring you know, your words, the words that God has given you to the people that they can understand. And I really think something like this, having this time to reflect and to hear testimonies from others is a way for us to take the Lord's word and put it in our hearts and keep it there, and take it with us throughout the week. Because God's word, we were discussing about the Old Testament and the stories in the Old Testament. And in God's word, we hear about his chosen people and how easily they forgot his blessings. Even though he took them out of their bondage in Egypt and he led them through the Red Sea and it was a dry land and the sea was up on the sides and you know it was a miracle it was a wonderful time and they were in the wilderness and they found themselves hungry and, and God rained manna down from heaven to feed them he looked after them and still they continued to forget there'd be a time when it came and it was difficult and their enemies were surrounding them on every side and again, we heard about how our enemies can be things like a bad habit. Just can't shake it. Things like the temptations that we face daily. I know I also face temptations. I face the difficulties of, well, Stephen mentioned he hasn't had a cigarette yet this morning, and I've struggled with that as well, of letting habits that are known, we know it's bad for us, we know it's not good for us, but we still, in those times of struggles or times of weakness, we give in. But God, here in the psalm that again David wrote, he tells us, that he is good and he satisfies us. Verse 10, some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom. When we give in to those temptations, when we have those bad days, it feels like darkness and gloom. But they cried to the Lord, verse 13, in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. God doesn't turn away and say, you know what, one, two, three, that's about it. That's all I can forgive you for. That's all I can save you from. No. Every single time. There is no limit to the love that God has for us and the forgiveness that he's willing to pour out if all we can do is cry out in our darkness, in our gloom, and say, Lord, help me. Search me. Take away this terrible trouble 
and he will do it. And we give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. I love the verses 16 and 17 where it says, he breaks down the gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Because these struggles that we go through can feel so strong against us, like a gate of bronze, like a bar of iron that's keeping your, your wrists and ankles, keeping you shackled to this doom and gloom, this bad habit, this terrible thought that continues to plague my mind. God breaks that down. He cuts through those bars. Even though we have become fools, we are rebellious. We are like the Israelites in the desert, even though God had brought them through hard times and they look around and they go, look at what we've got, nothing. There's nothing to eat, there's no shelter. What God have you brought us out to the wilderness to kill us, for us to die here? Have we ever felt like that? Have we ever come to a time in life and look around and go, you know, my family won't answer my phone calls anymore. I don't have, I've lost a third job this month. I don't have anything to pay for my rent or to buy my food. God has obviously left me out here in the wilderness to die alone. But the psalm gives us hope. Call out to him. They cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. That's verse 19, which was very similar to verses before and are very similar to verses after. In this psalm, every example of distress, when we cry out to God, he answers. And he heals them. And he rescues them. And he provides in the desert pools of water to the parched ground flowing springs he brought the hungry to live. He founded a city where they could settle. God provides for us. We just need to reach out to him and ask him for that forgiveness and he'll pour out the blessing. We don't even have to ask for blessings. They just come. I know this is an example we've all experience before in that you're thinking of somebody you're you're feeling like oh if only i could talk to that somebody and before you know what the phone rings and it is that somebody hey you know i just came across something on facebook on the social medias and made me think about you so i just thought i'd give you a call and your soul is refreshed and blessed we don't even have to ask for those blessings. They come when we ask God to be there, when we recognize that God is with us and God loves us. I like the last verse, and of course, verse 43, we read, whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. Wisdom. Wisdom is knowing where to find help when you're at the end of your own world. Let us heed not only the words of God this morning, but the words of our brothers Bob and Stephen. As they remind us, we have difficulties. But praise God, he's overcome those difficulties. And he's there to help us, just as close as a whispered prayer, God, be there for me. I did have a little bit more, but you know, I think what we need to do today, all of us who are gathered here and joining us on online, I'd like us to take a moment before we sing our final song and just release to God anything those dark places in your soul 
in your closet that you didn't want, you don't want anybody else to see, give those to God now. Allow him to fill you with his spirit. Allow God to take away the bronze gates, the iron chains that have kept you down and let him release it. Let him fill your soul today. Take a moment now. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for great deeds you do for us. We thank you for the ability to come to you in our darkest hour. We thank you for your forgiveness of even our unspeakable sins. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with us, to remind us that you are here, and to keep us looking to you, looking to our Savior Jesus, as we sing this morning of your great gift of Jesus' love, of Jesus' life for our lives to be closer to you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course you ask me what what would you like to sing, Shar? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out my favorite hymn. And that's what this is. And can it be? It's number three five two in the book of praise. And for for this time right now I think we should Pay attention to the fourth verse when it talks about God bringing us out of our chains. So let's join together and sing, And Can It Be That I Should Gain.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift and that you have given all for us. And we thank you for that this morning. May God give you his grace and wisdom and protection this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 